When I was a beginner, I got really fascinated by the idea of improvised bass fills. So I'd watch some videos of Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers and seen how he would break out these improvised fills just out of nowhere that sounded amazing. Now, because I was a beginner, I thought, okay, well, this can't be hard. You just play whatever you want and make something up on the spot. So I did that and it sounded terrible. But what I didn't understand at the time, and what I want to show you now, is that a great bass fill has three main components. And as long as you know what they are and how to practice them, coming up with great bass fills actually isn't all that difficult. So what's the first component? So just quickly before we get into bass fills, we need a bass line to practice with that we can add fills to. What I'm going to use for this video is the bass line from a tune called 100 by Tommy Sims. It's just this. and it loops round and round again. So the first component of a great bass fill is rhythm. Now, when I say rhythm, what I mean is take one note from a bass line, so the root note G, third fret of the E string in our case, and apply a simple rhythm to it. So if I choose the rhythm da da da, three eighth notes, I can start dropping that three eighth note fill into our groove. Ba, ba, ba. Now you might be thinking that sounds all well and good, but it doesn't yet sound like a fill. Okay, you'd be right in thinking that, but remember this is just one component. This is a building block of a fill. And the idea behind having a simple rhythm on one note is it encourages our fills not to be too busy, not to be too flamboyant and too flashy, and it actually helps to give them a little bit of shape. Okay, well how does that help us make a better fill? <laughs> That helps us when we get onto the second component of a great fill, which is starting to add notes and pitches. Now, I wanna add like a little preface to this. This is where it gets complicated because one of the difficult things about a good bass fill is that there are literally so many things you could do. There are so many rhythms to choose, so many notes to pick from. So having a simple rhythm helps to give you a fill a bit of clarity and helps you keep you focused on what you're actually doing. And then when it comes to adding pitches to that, there are two ways you can do this. First of all, if your theory knowledge is good enough to know what chord you're playing over what key you're in you can use the relevant scales and arpeggios and imply your rhythm from step one to the notes that you choose so back to our example 100 by tommy sims is in g minor so here you could use a g minor pentatonic you could use a g dorian scale and then when it comes to adding the fill just pick three notes from one of those scales that you think sounds quite cool so in the g dorian scale I quite like the F, E natural, and the D. Remember my rhythm was gonna be those three notes, da, da, da. So back in the groove. There's my fill. What should you do if you don't know theory and you don't know chords and scales? How can you still use pitch? Well, a safe bet that works no matter what bass line you're playing is to use notes that are already inside the bass line. So our bass line mostly consists of a G, but there's an N turnaround to this later, which goes from C to D and then F to G like that. So I know those notes are going to fit, even if I don't know what they're called or what scale they're a part of. So I can just apply that rhythm to a small group of those notes. Okay, we're making progress, but there's still one huge problem here. If you've ever been to a gig and you've seen a really bad bass player or a really bad musician that's just playing all over the song and putting fills in everywhere, what a lot of people would say about them is that they're not playing for the song. What this means is they're putting in so many fills that it's actually completely ruining the song and basically just overplaying. Now, this is one of the biggest problems when it comes to making fills because yes, we can talk about how to generate ideas through pitch and through rhythm, which is great but if you think about any time that you've been inspired by a bass player who's played a great fill like I was with Flea back in the early days what makes the fill so exciting is that it comes across as a fill it comes across as a decoration so what we've looked at so far is great but it just focuses on how to generate ideas it doesn't focus on actually where to place them within a song okay I just want to take a quick break here before we look at the last component of a fill because if you're a beginner and you're wanting to learn how to do fills what you you're gonna need are some bass lines and some songs to practice them with. I did a video on five songs that beginners shouldn't skip, which would be ideal for practicing bass fills. So if you wanna check out that video, it's in the card up here, just click up there. But before you do that, let's get on and look at the third tip. So if you 
you truly want to learn how to play great bass fills, you're going to have to look at the third component, which is placement. So what do we mean when we talk about placement? Placement is all about where you decide to put a fill within the structure of a song. So what, does that mean how many times you do it? Well, sort of, let me explain. Yes, there's an element of worrying about how many times you do a fill, Placement is much more concerned with where within the structure of a song you decide to put your fills. Really, really common places for bass players to put fills are at the end of sections of songs. So at the end of a verse going into a chorus, the end of a chorus going into a verse. But you also find plenty of people that do fills every four, eight or 16 bars, which usually coincides with every melodic phrase within the song that you're playing. And these fills just serve to decorate and punctuate those phrases. Check this out, if I play our groove four times and then add a fill on the fourth time. One, two, three, four, is a fill. That fill lands really well because it hits all these three main components. It's got good rhythm, it's got good note choices, but also it's placed at a really good point. It marks out a phrase in the music. You can also imagine if I was transitioning into a verse from a chorus, that would be a good place to put a fill. So those are the three main components. Now what you need is a way to practice this. So what I'd encourage you to do is listen to some simple bass lines. There are five that I recommend in this video that I talked about earlier. Thanks very much for watching guys. If you've enjoyed this video, then please leave your comments and thumbs up down below. If you really enjoyed it, why not consider subscribing? And I'll see you again on another lesson real soon. Take it easy.